This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in this tutorial, we'll be going over how you can create simple animated GIFs using Inkscape. Now, unfortunately, Inkscape doesn't allow you to export animated GIFs, so what we're going to do is we're going to create the frames individually and then open them as layers in GIMP, and then from there we can export it as an animated GIF. And if you don't know what GIMP is, it's a free and open source image editor. I'll have a link to that in the description of the video if you want to download and install that real quick, and then you'll be good to get started. So for my example here, as you can see, I have this little animated character that I create. We have some uh, basic facial movements going on here, and then we have a sleeping cat on the desk with his tail occasionally moving. And the way that I made this was, I created these frames individually here in Inkscape. And what I did was I used the batch export feature to export all of these individual images and then open them with GIMP and then from there I was able to quickly export it. So I'm going to show you how to do something similar, maybe not with this particular design. I'm going to show you how to create like a simple loading spinner design. So let's open up a new document here and get started. Now I should mention that you should be using Inkscape version 1.2 or later in order to follow along with this tutorial because we're going to need the batch export feature which is new to this version. If you don't know which version you're using, just go to help and about Inkscape and it should tell you right there. As you can see, I'm using version 1.2 or version 1.2.1 to be specific. So as long as you're using this version or later, you'll be good to go. So I'm going to press 1 on the keyboard to zoom into 100%, and I'm going to press down the mouse wheel and move the mouse to get the uh, canvas off of the page here. We're actually not going to use this canvas at all. We're going to create rectangles and use those for our frames. So I'm going to grab the uh, rectangle tool, the squares and rectangles tool, and I'm going to create a vertical rectangle like that maybe a little smaller. And I'm going to use this handle right here to give this a rounded edge. We want this to be all the way rounded like that. And I'm going to make this a lighter shade of gray, maybe something like that. Now I'll grab the selection tool. I'm going to duplicate this by right clicking it and going to duplicate. And then I'm going to move this down, but I'm also going to hold control on my keyboard while I move it like that. So it locks it onto the vertical axis. And now we have these two rectangles. I'm going to click and drag over both of those. I'm going to group them together by going to Object and selecting Group. And now, if I click on this object, as you can see here, we have these scaling handles represented by these arrows. If I click on this again, you'll notice it toggles between the scaling handles and the rotation handles. With this rotation handle selected, I'm just going to click and drag it like this. And then I'm going to hold the Control key. And if you notice, as I hold the Control key, it's locking it onto 15 degree increments. So I'm going to start right here. And while holding Control and while holding the click, I'm going to press the Space Bar to make a copy. And then I'm going to move this over to the right. One, two, three. Press the space bar again. One, two, three. Space bar again. One, two, three. And for this last one, you can just let go. And there you go. Now we have the uh, individual rectangles for our spinner. So let me click and drag over all of this right here. And let me go to Object, Ungroup. Click off of the graphic to deselect everything. I'm, let, me, let me just center this up here. Again, to move the page around, you just press down the mouse wheel and move the mouse. I'm going to click on this top one right here, and I'm going to make this a darker shade like that. And now I'm going to click and drag over all of this, and now I want to group it together by going to Object, Group. And let me actually just scale this down a little bit. I'm going to click and drag this to scale it down, and then I'm going to hold Control and Shift to make this a little smaller. So I want that to be a little smaller like that. And now I'm going to create a rectangle going over it, or a square rather. I'm going to click and drag, hold control to make a perfectly symmetrical square like that. We don't want rounded corners on this one, so I'm going to click on this little corner box up here that says make corner sharp. And I will make this one white. This is going to represent the background of our design. So let me grab the uh, select tool. Let me lower this to the bottom, this button right here that says lower selection to the bottom. And now I'm going to click and drag over both of these objects. And I want to make sure that, that it's centered up uh, so, uh, vertically and horizontally. So I'm going to open up the alignment menu, which is right here. The keyboard shortcut is Control, Shift, and A. So I'm just going to use that instead. Control, Shift, and A. Uh, where it says relative to, make sure you have last selected enabled. And we're going to center this up on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis like that. And I actually don't like the uh, contrast here. I'd like this to be a little darker. So I'm just going to grab the uh, Edit Paths by Nodes tool and click on that one object right there. And I'm going to choose a darker shade. There we go. That looks a little better. OK, click off of it to deselect. So what I want to do is I basically want to create copies of this for each frame of this. I want each of these rectangles to be highlighted in this color in separate frames. So let me select this right here. Let me press Control D to duplicate it. Hold Control, move it over to the right like this, and now we have our second frame. 
So I want to rotate this around. I'm going to click on this object, click on it again to get the rotation handles, and I'm going to hold control and I'm going to rotate this three steps to the right like that. So now we have another copy of this object where this rectangle is illuminated instead of this one. And if you could see where I'm going with this, I'm going to create more copies for every single one of these rectangles. So let me zoom out here. To zoom in and out, I'm just holding control and rolling up and down the mouse wheel. Let me create another copy of this. Control D, hold control, move it over like that. Click off of it to deselect. Click on the object. Click on it again to get the rotation handles. And then hold control, one, two, three. And there we go, now we have that one. So I'll show you this one more time. I'm going to click and drag over it. Control D to duplicate. Hold Control, move this over here. Click off of it to deselect. Click on just this object right here. Click on it again to get the rotation handles. Hold Control. One, two, three. There we go. And what I'll do is I'll just fast forward through this real quick. Okay, so as you can see, I have finished making my frames. The last one that I was going to make is this one right here because the first one is already represented by this one right here. So now we have all of our individual frames. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see it better. Once we are finished making our frames, what we want to do is group them all together individually. So I'm going to click and drag over this one and I'm going to group it. Instead of going to Object and selecting Group, an easier way to do this would be to just press Control G on the keyboard. So Control G, click and drag over this one, Control G, Control G and you get the ID. I'm just going through and grouping these one by one. And we want to make sure that these are grouped so that when we batch export it, they will all be their own individual elements, each frame. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to close out of the Align and Distribute menu. What I want now is the Layers menu. So over here where it says uh, View Objects, uh, that, click that button right there. Keyboard shortcut, Control, Shift, and L. And if I click on these objects, you'll notice that they highlight as they select them. So I'm going to click on this one right here. And as you can see, what's highlighted is this, this label right here. I want to change the name of this from whatever this is to the number one, because this is the first frame in our sequence. So let me double click that. I'm just going to change it to one and press enter. I'll click on this one. This is frame number two. And this one is what's highlighted. So I'll click on that and change that to two. Press enter. I'll change this one to three. Press enter. Four five, six, seven, and eight. And if you're having trouble seeing which layer you have selected, sometimes if you're working with a complicated animation, you're going to have lots of different layers and different frames going on here. You might have to scroll up and down through this list here if you have a lot of items to figure out which, which it is that you have selected. So once we've finished doing that, we've now have our, we now have our individual layers ready to go. I'm going to click and drag over all of these objects right here. And now what I want to do is open up the Export menu. I will go to File, and I will select Export. Now in this menu, we want to choose Batch Export, and we want to make sure we have Selection. We have these three different options. We have Layer, Selection, and Pages. We want to choose Selections. Now, by default, if you have all of these selected, you should see it's all ready to go right here. We have these check boxes here, one, two, three, four. It's not in order, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a place on my computer to export these to. I'm just going to put these on my desktop. I'll click this little folder icon down right here. And I'm just going to put this on my desktop, and I'm going to name this. Uh, I'm just going to name this Spinner. Click Save. Leave these defaults as they are and click OK. And then it will export all of those individually, and they should all be there now on your desktop. So now it's time to open up GIMP so that we can turn this into an animated GIF. So let me open up, let me open up GIMP. And once you have GIMP opened, what you want to do is go to File and select Open as Layers. Now you should see right here, I have my desktop opened. Here's the spinner graphics, spinner one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. You want to select all of these, so I'm going to select it. Hold Shift and click on all of these so that we have them all selected and go to Open. Now this may take a second because it has to open up each of these individual images one by one as you see it doing here. So uh, give it a second to do its thing. And it should open them in order as long as you numbered them like I demonstrated in uh, the export portion of the lesson. They should open up an order like that. And now what you can do is you could just export this as an animated GIF. So let's go to File and go to Export As. 
And I'm just going to title this, I'm just going to name this spinner. And over here where it says select file type, I'm going to choose GIF image and click export. Now this part's really important. Uh, you're going to get this menu that pops up. Make sure where it says as animation, make sure you have this enabled. By default, when you open up GIMP, this will be deselected. If you don't have this selected, it's just going to export it as a static image. Make sure you have that selected right there. And this right here, delay between frames were unspecified in milliseconds. I think by default it's 200. Now, um, the number that you should put here depends on your graphic. But for this spinner graphic, I'm just going to use 100. Uh, if, you, if you use this number and you find out it's too fast or the animation is too slow, you can always go back and change this number later on. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to leave it at 100. Press export. And if I go to my desktop, it should be there. Let me get out of there. Where is uh, spinner.gif? There we go. So I'm going to open this up, and there you go. Now we have our spinning, our little loading spinner animation that we created with Inkscape and with GIMP. So uh, I think that should do it for this tutorial. That is how you can create simple animated GIFs using Inkscape. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work, kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. I'll have some information about that in the description of the video if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.